Hi everybody, and welcome to this episode with the Anxious Resistance. And today we're going to be talking about Deflin, or L-methylfolate, for depression and for anxiety. So, what is Deflin? Deflin is a medical food, so it is something that's um, regulated by the FDA and is tested for purity and quality and all that stuff. So, it's not quite a medication because you know, it doesn't have serious effects like medications can have. It's used by health professionals to reach a therapeutic goal or to help raise a certain level of a certain thing in the body. Now, Deplin is the brand name and the generic name is L-methylfolate. And I've got a bottle here. This is what I've been taking. So it is not Deplin. It is an off-brand and generic, just L-methylfolate. So what it does is it's recommended to be used with an antidepressant. And the reason is, is because an antidepressant helps keep uh, serotonin specifically in the synaptic cleft. It's supposed to keep it in higher levels in the brain so that you feel better. But what Deplin or L-methylfolate does is it allows your body to have the materials and the nutrients it needs to create more serotonin and other neurotransmitters such as dopamine and norepinephrine. So L-methylfolate, when combined with an antidepressant, can really increase your levels of serotonin and other neurotransmitters to help your mood uh, be lighter and have you feel better. So why isn't everybody taking the answer is that not everybody thinks it works, and it's very expensive. I know for me, I was on the name brand Deflin for just somewhere around three to six months, and I felt better, but it was only somewhat better in my mood, and I was paying, I was getting the sample, I was actually getting the samples for free from my doctor. But you know, he was running out of samples and only had so many. It's quite expensive to take Deplin long term. And I'll give you a price estimate here in the video. Okay, so not everybody is taking L-methylfolate or Deplin because it's expensive. So for me, I paid $30 for 15 milligrams for this is a two month supply. So that's a lot cheaper than the name brand stuff. And Actually, I feel just as good taking this as I did taking the name brand. So it depends on where you get it, if it's quality. Now, the Deplin is regulated by FDA. I'm not sure that this is, but I can tell you I feel better on it. Okay, so everybody gets folic acid in their diet, which is then converted through a seven-step process to L-methylfolate. And that's what your body uses to create the neurotransmitter. Now, some people have a mutation with the gene that converts folic acid to L-methylfolate. So some people are asking, okay, well, why, why would I take L-methylfolate over folic acid, which doctors prescribe fairly often too? And the reason is 5 to 10% of the population and an even higher percentage than that in people with treatment-resistant depression and anxiety are able to convert the folic acid to L-methylfolate, so your body can't use it. And this has been proven by some studies, and I want to go ahead and talk about one of those right now, and it's an article from Medline Plus, and it states, high levels of the amino acid homocysteine are a major threat to an aging person's health, raising the risk for cardiovascular disorders such as heart attack and stroke. Folate is known to be effective in lowering homocysteine levels, but a large proportion of people find that their homocysteine levels remain stubbornly high, even on folic acid supplements. Some people have a mutation in a gene that allows them to convert folic acid to L-methylfolate, so that with that mutation, they aren't able to convert it. 
This could be caused by the fact that 5-10% to 10 of the population and nearly half of people of European descent carry a gene variant that reduces the activity of the enzyme required to efficiently convert folic acid into the active homocysteine lowering form of the vitamin L-methylfolate. Normally, folic acid and other vitamins break down homocysteine and change it into other substances your body needs. So you need this gene and you need it to work correctly, is what this study is saying. And it has other effects on your health other than not having enough levels of neurotransmitters. It also increases your risk for heart attack and it increases your risk for stroke. So this is important in your all around health. Now in another article that's more specifically about the mental health aspects of L-methylfolate, which is for psychcongress.com, it is stated that traditional drugs such as SSRIs and SNRIs block reuptake of neurotransmitters, while L-methylfolate spurs the production of more neurotransmitters. It primes the pump within, says Dr. Draw. Dr. Drada added that clinicians might hesitate to use the compound because the mechanism of action is unfamiliar and because of a misconception that a prescription for folic acid is just as effective as L-methylfolate. Literature suggests that depression is linked with folate deficiency and that patients with insufficient folate are less likely to respond to treatment and more likely to experience a relapse. Folate supplementation does help some patients, acknowledged Dr. Jane, but the full story is more complicated. Folic acid in and of itself does not alleviate depression. Our brain must convert folic acid into L-methylfolate before it can manufacture enough serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine to alleviate depression. However, Certain individuals lack the ability to convert the folic acid to L-methylfolate, rendering folic acid supplements ineffective for this group of patients. And like I said, that's a high percentage of patients. And the article states up to 70% of patients with depression test positive for the polymorphism and therefore cannot convert folic acid into L-methylfolate. So that's 70% of the people with depression have this this mutation. So up to 70% of people with depression could potentially benefit from L-methylfolate. And so my experience has been that it is helpful and I don't feel like it significantly increases my mood but I do feel like after taking it for a couple of weeks that I feel like my energy um, and my mood are both better and at a level where I'm spending $30 for two months supply it's it's totally worth it $15 a month that's just like a prescription copay so I recommend that people try it especially if they've tried a folic acid supplement and it hasn't helped or if they're not getting enough relief from their antidepressant so this is something that you can try. Now you may want to try the name brand Deplin, or you may even want to try an off brand like me. And like I've said, I haven't noticed a difference in how the off brand has made me feel versus the Deplin. I think they both increase my mood about the same. I just want to say that this may not work for everybody. You may be in that 30% that is just fine in converting folic acid to L-methylfolate and creating neurotransmitters. But for that 70%, it's worth a try. I mean, anybody can drop 30 bucks for two months supply of something that will help their life be better. And if it doesn't work, don't buy it again. All right, everybody, thanks so much for tuning into this episode with The Anxious Resistance. If you found this content helpful, if you learned something, please like and subscribe to the channel. And I will have more videos like this twice a week about anxiety, depression, other mental health things that people are dealing with, my experiences, and all kinds of educational stuff. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.